Can you hear me? Uh, I think you can hear me. <laughs> um, I, um, welcome to my talk. Um, I'm going to talk about two things uh, put together and uh, I'll explain everything, so don't worry if you don't understand any of what I just uh, wrote there. Um, my name is uh, Dishan Ali Khan um, and uh, my previous name was Dishan Ali. It's more a correction now, so it's my actual correct name. <laughs> Um, so if you see my name is Lishan Ali somewhere, then that's also me. Um, and um, I have moved around in many countries. Uh, you will see Sweden's flag in there too, because I lived in Gothenburg for one year. Um, but yeah, but nowadays I'm uh, for the last five years, I think, uh, in Berlin, uh, in Germany. Um, yeah, my background is um, C. Uh, like I started with that, uh, did a bit of assembly too, but uh, yeah, mostly C. Um, then um, you, uh, there's a uh, multimedia project uh, called GStreamer. That's how I st got into open source. Um, it's also written in C. Um, and um, GNOME, if you have heard of it, the desktop environment uh, for, for Linux. Um, I was involved in that quite as well um, at some point. Um, and I work, if you know, if you ever heard of MIMO, MIGO, uh, in Nokia, times when Nokia was a big thing, <laughs> so I used to work there. Um, so mostly like desktop and embedded uh, systems, open source, that sort of stuff, that's my background. Um, and nowadays I'm a Rust fanboy. <laughs> Rust is a programming language, if you don't know. Um, and the uh, story um, for this talk begins in 2019, a bit earlier, but let's start with 2019. Um, we had a Hackfest for Rust, uh, GNOME Hackfest, which is um, uh, which is designed for um, having some some time where people get together to put, to make Rust a first class uh, citizen of, of GNOME. So you know, anyone, if they want to write apps or libraries for, for GNOME, they can do it in Rust. Um, so I was there and I thought, what, what can I do? Um, and uh, one thing um, I was thinking about for a while was to oxidize GeoClue. Um, if you don't know any of these two words, <laughs> that's okay, I'll explain. Um, so what's GeoClue first um, and what's uh, oxidizing? Um, so let's, let's take a step back and uh, talk about what's GeoClue. It is uh, simply put a geolocation service. Um, if you have a modern Linux machine, you probably have it running on your machine, and that's the uh, system. That's the system that tells uh, apps where where the user is currently, so the user's current location, and it's a it's a Dbus service. Um, we'll talk about Dbus too, <laughs> um, and it's written in C. Um, and yeah, you will ask what is what is Dbus. Uh, oh, and I forgot to mention that uh, I'm, uh, I've been the maintainer uh, of that project for after uh, the rewrite. I did the rewrite, so I became the maintainer. Um, and yeah, so what, what is Dbus? Um, it's a very efficient, uh, well, I don't know, very efficient, but it's a it's an efficient binary uh, interprocess communication protocol. Um, so if two uh, programs want to talk to each other, uh, they can use this IPC uh, mechanism. And it's very popular on uh, desktop and embedded systems uh, still for uh, since 2007 when it came out, um, especially like on, on Linux, as I said. Um, so all your Linux uh, systems underneath the, uh, uh, their services basically they use um, uh, make use of Dbus. Um, uh, yeah, these these kind of all these projects, um, and it's um, a bit more than just an IPC. Because when people say IPC or, R, or even RPC sometimes, uh, they're talking about um, very low level stuff. They're not, you know, it's like message passing, you, you, you design a message, you send it over to the other side. Uh, but it's a bit more than that, Dimas. Um, it's more like an API. So you can expose an API um, to, to, for, for, to be called uh, by other side um, from the other processes. Um, on a low level, it is message passing, so that's the low level part of the protocol. Um, but on the higher level, um, it's, it has other things such as, for example, objects. And objects have uh, specific paths, that's how they're, uh, those objects are identified. 
Um, so object paths are just identifiers for objects. Um, and they're uh, designed to, uh, around Unix, so uh, it was Unix people who created it. So it's like, they're just like, you know, normal file paths. Um, and then each object can have uh, one or multiple interfaces, and each interface defines an API. And those it, uh, uh, each API is, uh, or each interface is um, composed of a few things. Um, one or zero, <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, zero or multiple. Uh, and the most common one is methods. You almost always have methods on, a, on an object or an interface. Um, it's just like normal in, um, when you use program, any programming language, you have functions and methods, so it's, it's, very, it's exactly the same. It's just that you're calling it on a remote process or uh, another process. Um, and properties, so just like in programming languages, you have some fields or properties. So in here you also, objects can have uh, properties defined by their interface that they support. Um, and signals, it's just like um, uh, similar to methods, but the other way around. So um, if you want to signal someone, um, or usually, uh, most uh, often it's uh, broadcasted, but it doesn't have to be. But it's designed such that it's, um, it's best if you broadcast it to all the interested parties. Um, so, um, in Dbus, um, usually you use it um, with something called the broker, uh, also known as the Dbus daemon, um, also just the bus. Um, so, uh, when one process talks to another, it talks to an intermediary, and that, that thing is the bus or, or the broker. Um, that, that, uh, that process uh, runs in the background, and it ensures that all communication happens with some security in mind, um, and uh, nobody's exploiting the, the services. So the services themselves can uh, just relax and just let Dbus D daemon take care of any wrongdoings or anything like that. Um, um, and there, like if you have a Linux machine, you will have um, uh, two, two buses running already. One is the system bus, um, which is for the whole system, and it's like system D and network manager and conman, services like that, that are very system, and they are not like user specific. Those, um, all those services uh, expose their APIs on, on system bus. Um, but there is also for each uh, session of the user, there is a, a session bus, um, as the name suggests. Um, so you can expose for specific users. So those those um, uh, services are um, each instance of it is for the for that specific user whose session it is, um, and uh, no other other users cannot connect to it. So um, something like there is something called tracker, and there is like desktop services that are specific to your session, they, they run on this one. Um, apart from that, it's peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, or P2P is very much possible in Dbus and a lot of people use it. Um, uh, yeah, it's just that it's not the typical use case. Um, but when you do P2P, you, you're a bit on your own um, uh, like because the bus provides uh, services like uh, how to find the other um, a service uh, by a well-known name, a common name, uh, but if you are on P2P, you have to establish the connection directly to the other side yourself, um, and that's not like, uh, it's, it's a bit of a work, so uh, you, in most cases you just want to expose a service or uh, client uh, to a service, and that's it. Um, and what did I mean by oxidizing or oxidation uh, in the beginning? Um, that's, um, uh, that's a term given to porting to Rust, because rust, as you know, like when something gets rusty, it's because it's getting oxidized. Um, so that's a term we use there. And um, what I was trying to say was that I wanted to port GeoCrew to Rust from C. Um, but you would ask why? Why would I do that? Like it was already working. It was in C. Um, well, why would you? Why would you even think about it? And what's so special about Rust? Like why not some other programming language? Um, so. Um, let's let's talk about Rust a bit, like what it is about, and and then you will understand why I chose this language and why I wanted to port. Um, first of all, it's a systems programming language, so uh, exactly what you need. Um, uh, like uh, it's not like Python, which is more uh, tailored for systems programming, uh, sorry for uh, 
you know, scripting and, and stuff like that. It's not well designed for systems programming. Um, there are many other languages that are not. Um, C is and Rust is and C++ is and they're a very smaller sub subset of programming languages that are suited for, for this purpose. And GeoGlue is a system service, um, so hence system programming. Um, it's, um, and this language is, uh, in a way, it's not just another language. I keep, uh, people keep missing this important fact that uh, they think it's just another language and it's just another syntax, I just have to learn the syntax. It's not quite true. It's one of the first languages that combined uh, successfully efficiency and safety in the very uh, core of the language. It's designed to be both. So they, there's no compromise on either of these things. And that's what makes it um, as efficient as uh, C most of the time. Like it's almost as efficient, but more efficient than C++, for example. And at the same time, it's uh, a million times safer than in C, I would say. Um, and that's why like, uh, Microsoft, um, a few years back, 2019, I think, um, they published a report from their security uh, response center that 70%, uh, more than 70% of the um, CVEs and bugs and uh, issues they encounter are because of memory-related uh, mistakes. And those mistakes are very, very easy to make in C and C++, but they are much harder to make in, in Rust. Um, sometimes you have to go out of your way to make it happen. Some of those mistakes, if you want to do it on purpose, to, for demonstration, for example, it's harder to do in Rust. Um, um, yeah, 70% of the security issues are, are because of that. Um, and also, more recently, the uh, uh, NSA uh, uh, issued, um, uh, I don't know what it was called, <laughs> but there was a, a big statement about um, uh, they were pushing for uh, using safer programming languages like Rust um, uh, and moving away from C and C++, uh, which are not very safe and can easily be exploited. And frankly, I was just getting tired of <laughs> crash reports. Uh, my maintenance work was mostly about like getting crash reports and finding out why is it crashing, then fixing it. And then a lot of times it was happening that I fixed one crash and then that meant another part crashes. Then. <laughs> so there were assumptions. Um, and as I said, I had a lot of C experience. So I, I may not be the best C programmer out there, but I wasn't that bad. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, just laziness as well. Um, and also, like Rust goes beyond uh, just memory safety. Um, it um, ensures other kinds of safeties as well. For example, uh, there's a concept in Rust called fearless concurrency. Um, and it's because that it, uh, Rust doesn't allow you to have shared mutable state, for example, between, uh, between threads. Actually, it doesn't even allow you to have shared state between, um, uh, between threads um, unless you um, use specific APIs that are designed to be super safe and they are well, um, I would say, well designed and well uh, reviewed, uh, peer reviewed uh, very rigorously so you, are, you can be sure that uh, what you're doing with uh, sharing state between threads is, is safe. So there are concepts like those as well uh, in the language so it's not just memory safety but all kinds of safety. Um, and it's on top of that, it's a modern language, so it has a lot of modern features, modern uh, mechanics and stuff, and syntaxes uh, to do things more uh, nicely. Um, so I, I guess you've got it by now, so I'll, I'll stop <laughs> selling Rust to you. Um, and back to our uh, story. Um, but how, how do I use uh, do debugs? Like if I want to um, port GeoGlue um, to, to uh, Rust, I need some way to um, talk to the bus and, and other uh, to connect to it so that clients can connect to the service. Um, I thought like maybe there's a crate for it and of course there was one. It was called Dbus RS um, and it's just a, a binding on top of C library um, and um, it's, uh, that library is called Dbus. Lib -Dbus. It's a reference implementation but it's notoriously bad. I haven't actually seen more, many people use this library in C. So if they're doing Dbus in C, they don't use this. They use other libraries, um, like uh, glib or, or if in C++, then you use the QTs or some other, there are others as well. Um, but everyone avoids this for a reason, because it's bad. And that uh, Rust library is based on that. Um, 
So, and there are multiple issues with it. Um, there was no CI. Actually, the maintainer I talked to him about, like, oh, you pushed this directly to main branch and it broke everything. Uh, so can we have some CI or something and do PRs? And he was like, yeah, I don't actually believe much in, in CI. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, so uh, actually things have changed, I've heard after that, then they have some CI, but not as good as I'll, I'll tell later about what we have. Um, and as I said, it's still C underneath, so it's just a binding, it's not really... So I wouldn't be doing really Rust, I would be still relying on a lot of C code, um, which I didn't want to do anyway. Uh, and the, the most annoying thing was the API was super complicated to uh, figure out. Um, to be honest, I was also new to Rust at the time, so that didn't help me. But I also asked, uh, I was at this Hackfest, of course, so there were Rust experts there, and I asked them, and they couldn't figure out some of the things either. So I was like, okay, this, this is actually is complicated. And uh, I wanted to share this um, uh, thing I shared on, on Facebook. Um, and I was like, how do I instantiate this type? If you look at this type, you will want to cry, right? It's so, so complicated. It's like, what is this? And, um, um, and one of the guys, um, he, he was actually already pretty good on Rust, uh, ex-colleague from Nokia. He said, uh, well, why do you need this? This doesn't seem right. This, this is not trust. This is something else. Um, and then you wrote, okay, probably someone will create a more ergonomic API uh, eventually. So I was like, okay, maybe that someone could be me. <laughs> uh, and I thought about um, doing uh, Debus uh, Create. Create is actually the word uh, in Rust for libraries. Um, so uh, Debus Create um, from, from scratch. Um, a bit scary, uh, but I was like, how hard can it be? <laughs> um, so, uh, next several months, I, I was working on it, hard at work, um, and um, I took also, uh, what made it a bit harder was that I wanted to do a very systematic approach, so a bottoms up approach, and first things first, um, and I first wrote this uh, library called Zvariant, which um, handles the encoding and decoding part. Um, of the protocol. So then um, the networking and the things on top, uh, they can be built on top of that. But once I have the encoding and decoding in, in Rust itself, um, uh, which, is also, which is called the wire protocol, uh, in, if you look at the deepest specification. Um, and I was learning Rust the hard way. As I said, I was a beginner at the time. I, I, I was sold to it, but I, I hadn't really learned it. And um, yeah, this was my way of learning it, but it was very hard uh, because I, I think I hit all possible uh, roadblocks with Rust I could have. <laughs> um, and um, I had a lot of fun also with Debus spec. Uh, there was a few places where it was uh, a bit unclear um, and that wasted a lot of my time because I made some assumptions that were really not true. Um, yeah. Um, and but we, we made it uh, create Zebus 1.0 1, 1 after uh, several months. Uh, I think there was one uh, Christmas holiday in between that I spent on that. Um, but uh, soon after that, somebody came to me in the conference and said, uh, "How do you do this?" And I was like, yeah, "It's working." Then I then they told me uh, the correct interpretation of one part of uh, the spec, which is about empty arrays. How do you uh, encode arrays? And that was broken. So if anyone would use it for an empty array, which I hadn't tested, um, it, it was completely broken. It just couldn't handle it, it would crash. Uh, well, um, it wasn't exactly a crash, it was more like a panic, which is like a very controlled uh, sort of crash, but not exactly. It's not as serious as a crash in C and C++, uh, basically. Um, and after several months, <laughs> I wanted to fix this. And I also wanted to make the API a more um, ergonomic and make it uh, work with something called SERDE, uh, which is an uh, API for encoding and decoding in Rust. So uh, anything you want to decode and uh, encode in, in Rust for any protocol or anything like JSON or TOML or whatever, uh, SERDE is the library that everyone uses, that's the API. And that's not what I was uh, supporting. So the first issue anyone filed uh, on Zvariant was, uh, was that, uh, that why don't you support SERDE? So that was also included and then uh, I made Z Zvarian 2.0 and uh, solved all the problems that I could know and finally I was done with the lower bit, the lower end bit. Um, just wanted to show a bit of how it looks like <laughs> because 
um, yeah, it's not, if you look closely, it's not, it's not that weird. <laughs> um, you, uh, you have, a, but keep in mind, this is the low, low level bit. If you use, usually uh, do any kind of debus, you will not really see this much. Um, so yeah, you, you create a context, you say which byte order you want, uh, and I will tell why you have to say uh, dbus um, specifically, um, because you're thinking like, it is dbus, why, why do I have to say it? And uh, there's a reason for it. Um, and um, yeah, you, you can create a tuple, which is a, uh, the T is a tuple, which is an unnamed struct, basically, structure. Um, and uh, yeah, you encode it, you decode it the same way. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I know there is a lot of things that you might not understand immediately, but um, I think the crux of it, you, you understand, is just you give it something to encode and something to decode uh, the bytes and then it decodes it back to you, for you. Yeah, so this, this is the reason why you had to specify explicitly uh, um, Dbus. Uh, and this is also why uh, I made it a separate uh, library uh, than uh, the actual dbus library um, so that um, uh, for this format there is a format called gvariant which was supposed to be actually dbus uh, 2.0 uh, protocol which it was supposed to be uh, merged into dbus as well but it, that never happened for some reason um, but uh, what did happen was this gvariant format on its own became very popular and um, it's very similar to Dbus, it builds on that, it's, there is some uh, uh, dissimilarities. It fixes some of the problems with Dbus and it um, uh, yeah, and adds, uh, add, adds a few uh, nice features as well. Uh, and it's actually uh, even more efficient than Dbus. So, um, yeah, um, uh, I wanted to support that as well, uh, because as I said, many people are using it, so I was like, if I want to write decoding and coding anyway, why don't I also give, uh, put a, a bit more work and also support this format so people can use it uh, separately. Um, anyway, back to Jesus. Um Several other moons later, <laughs> uh, we had the first uh, Zebus um, version, uh, this first release, uh, and it, was, it wouldn't have happened if one of my ex-colleagues uh, hadn't uh, joined the project and helped me finish the work. And designed some of the uh, good APIs in there, uh, Mark and Um And you are also wondering probably what's with the Z <laughs> that letter said. Um, it's just basically when I was at the Hackfest, I, I was like, what should I name it? And it's, uh, I was like, well, what about Zbus? And so one, one of the persons said, why not? <laughs> I was like, okay, why not? <laughs> so, I it. so it's, yes, it is because of my name, but uh, yeah, it's, it's not because I'm. <laughs> Uh, uh, big on my name is just I couldn't come up with a better name. <laughs> um, so, but the problem with the 1.0 API was it's, it was a blocking API, and um, if you do a lot of um, you know uh, networking programming, you will uh, you will know that it's not a, it's not ideal. Uh, actually, in Rust, uh, the way uh, things work and the way threadings work uh, and everything. It's, it's not that bad um, uh, blocking API, uh, you can use it really, really nicely. But um, it still would, is not ideal, it would be better to have an async API. Um, and um, uh, we added some, uh, basically I added some async APIs, uh, but then I realized that since the design of 1.0 was not really async centric, um, it was really hard to add the async without getting into some weird problems. Um, and yeah, I gave up on that part and I was like, okay, we need to re do a 2.0 for this as well. So, didn't quite fit in, as I said, um, so another year of hard work. Um, async uh, in Rust is one, uh, the async is one area in Rust that is not as mature as the rest of the language. Um, it's still a bit fragile. Um, you can use it, there's some choices that you can make. And if, if you make those choices, then it's, it's all nice, it's, it's perfect almost. But if, if, you don't, if you can't make those choices, then as a library you can't, um, which, is, which was a problem for me. I wanted it to be agnostic to various, there are these runtimes that run the async machinery, and, and they are not part of the Rust standard library, they are uh, on purpose uh, not made part of it. So people can create different kind of runtime machinery with different um, choices 
um, like uh, a runtime that works uh, brilliantly for a server would, would not be uh, working really well for embedded systems, for example, and also vice versa. Um, so because of that, it's, it's external and that for, for library uh, authors, it, it, uh, it's quite a pro problem. So for me, it was a problem and I, I created multiple versions, uh, beta versions of 2.0 before I came up with the final working design and API. Um, yeah, as I said, there's no standard runtime, run um, async runtime, so that didn't help. But ultimately, we made it. As the Ziva Studio Zero happened, um, and that's another person uh, joined in. It's uh, Daniel DeGraff. I've never seen that person. I just know that they're somewhere in the U.S. And but they helped a lot. Um, they they have a really keen eye over security, and they made it work. Um, and then uh, this API 2.0 is async first, and that's why I wanted to do a complete, almost complete change of API, uh, a complete break. Um, because then I can make async the first class citizen, um, and blocking is blocking API is just a wrapper around the async uh, APIs, um, and you will you typically only use um, blocking wrappers if you have like a simple need, like you just want to try it out or something like that. Um, What's that? Level? Ah, okay. <laughs> I wanted to show you the, the code. So uh, we will start with a simple uh, service. How does it look like the Zebus uh, 2.0 for API? Um, it's um, yeah. I don't know how much uh, Rust you know, <laughs> but if you do know some Rust, then it should be quite clear how how you do it. Um, if you do Dbus in other languages, you will also find that this is uh, absolutely amazing <laughs> because it's it's so simple. Um, you create a, uh, uh, um, uh, a type, it could be any type, it doesn't have to be a struct, it can be any kind of type, uh, enum or whatever, and you can have an implementation. The implementation of a type in Rust just means you add methods uh, to it um, for that type. And yeah, you do this the same way as you would normally do in Rust, but you just have to declare that uh, it's a Dbus interface with a magic, it's a, it's a macro actually, um, and you tell it what is the name on, on the bus uh, that you want to expose. Uh, sorry, this is the name of the interface uh, you're declaring. Um, and then you define the methods, like you would define a normal method uh, implementation here. Um, it takes a string and it does a counter, it just uh, increments each time and it just returns a string with, that, uh, with both those uh, uh, inputs. Um, yeah, and then you just um, um, create a connection. Connection is something that talks to the other side, <laughs> whether it's a, a, a bus, a broker, or it could be uh, just another, uh, uh, yeah, just a directly to another peer, uh, another process. Um, and um, in this case, we take the simple route, we create a connection to the session bus, um, and we choose a name for our service, which is the uh, same as the service, uh, oh, sorry, interface. And uh, yeah, we serve one object on it uh, with one uh, interface. Um, that's the object path here, serving it, and that's it. You are, have a service now registered on the session bus with a simple API. Um, and the client side for the same thing, it's very similar. Um, instead of creating an uh, uh, implementation, uh, because the implementation is now on the other side, right? So you just want to call that implementation. Um, and uh, you just create something called a trait in Rust, which is similar to interfaces in other languages, um, where you just define an API and you don't implement it. Um, so, uh, as we did in the other side, we uh, implement it, but this time we're just declaring the same exact thing. Um, and then we create the same connection, we create a proxy, the proxy is just a proxy on the other side, and uh, we give it what interface it is. Right? Um, and yeah, we just call the method as if it's a method locally, right? Um, yeah, that's it, <laughs> and it works. Um, and it, it, uh, Zbus has become uh, the go-to uh, Dbus query by now. Um, people who don't use Zbus either uh, just didn't find it in the first place, or um, they're too lazy to port over their existing code, or they don't have time, fair enough. 
um, or um, they have some very specific needs uh, that can be only filled by the C wrapper because it's a C wrapper and yeah, there, there could be needs that, that are not fulfilled by Zebus, at least for now. Um, sure. Um, but usually people, that's what people use. Um, so Word conquered, it became the default script and everything, nice. Um, but are we there yet? No, it's, it's not done yet. <laughs> uh, I realized, like, not exactly, like, there's one thing still there, like, um, as I said, like, typically you will use the broker to talk to the other side. Um, and that is, the, there are two implementations uh, that are being used, uh, really used out there. I think there may be others too, but I've never heard of them. Um, so, and they're both in C language. And um, as, you, as I said, like, it's, just, then it's the same problem, right? Um, and this is something that sits in between all the services. So even if you write your services in the safest language on the planet, it wouldn't matter that much if the thing in between that is communication is... And the one that is implementing all the security protocols is in, is in C, right? And, and there has been many CVEs over the years for, on, the, on, on the main project, uh, uh, for example. Um, so it's, it's not just hypothetical. These things have been happening. These, uh, um, issues, uh, security issues, is, is a is a thing, is a problem, is a real problem, um, and because of that, remote, remote is even discouraged uh, by the maintainer of the uh, reference implementation. Um, yeah, because they don't want to deal with the outcome of that. Um, so I was like, why, why? How about I oxidize this as well? Go a bit step further, and I first thought like this would be much more work than 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 zero zero. Um, so I was like, okay, let's experiment. Doesn't hurt to experiment a bit. Um, and after two weekends, um, I had the basic implementation <laughs> done already, and I was very surprised myself because uh, I was like, what's going on? And then I realized what was going on because the like, Zbus was doing all the heavy lifting for me already. Um, because of the way I designed the API for, especially for 2.0, it already has these the queues um, per connection. And um, the main task of, of the bus is to route traffic between different peers that are connected to it. Um, so if I have those queues already uh, for me by, by Zbus API, then I just have to do a bit of routing uh, from those queues and, and that's it. Um, and yeah, and that's why it was super easy to create a very basic implementation, uh, just to a proof of concept. Um, so I was like, okay, let's do it. And I also... Um, uh, in Rust, it's uh, much easier to be portable. Um, so, uh, especially if all your um, uh, dependencies are also pure pure Rust, so then it's quite quite easy, and that's what we have in, in, in Rust. Um, and also for specifically, for, there were some few changes needed for macOS and uh, FreeBSD and Windows, but not a lot. Now, but anyway, since Z was supported. Um, all these platforms already, and we have a CI for all of them um, uh, in, uh, um, in the Divas implementation that I haven't told you the name of yet. It's, um, um, it was also pretty easy. Like I create, I, for Windows, I just created the CI um, on GitHub, and uh, as soon as I pushed it, on the first go, the CI just passed green, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. Um, it's amazing. Um, so I named it Divas, um, but uh, a, a lot of people are thinking that. So, and also when you say it out loud, it's hard to differentiate between Dbus and Dbus, um, especially for German folks because they pronounce S as Z and stuff. So, um, so yeah, I'm thinking of renaming it and the name on the top of my head is Buskin. I was going to do it today, I haven't done it yet. Um, but if you have a better name in mind, uh, just, just let me know. Um, I will consider it. Um, uh, sorry? <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> um, still a long way to go, of course. It's not, uh, it's not done yet. Um, short term, there are some short term goals that I hopefully will be fulfilled very soon. Um, and that would make it a minimum viable product. Um, the standard API, um, uh, so the bus, um, the, the DBus spec specification um, has uh, standard APIs. Um, uh, in it that the uh, bus itself is supposed to expose. So there, 
the bus itself has a service basically, and those uh, that service uh, provides these standard APIs. Um, uh, and uh, I'm, I have some of them implemented, uh, very like maybe twenty percent of them, but the rest I have to implement before I can call it MVP. Um, and uh, yeah, the future goals um, I want it to be the Dbus two point zero, um, and by me, by that I mean like. I, I want to support also G variant because, as I said, it fixes some of the problems uh, with um, with Dbus and it adds a few things. So I want to provide that option to to users so that if they want to use that more efficient, better protocol, I'm sorry, they can um, they can do that. And one of the main thing that people cry about in, in when they come to to, to uh, Dbus and, and Zbus. They're like, how do I do it now? I'm like, yeah, the protocol doesn't allow it, so um, how do you do it? And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a bit of a problem. So, but uh, G-Variant uh, uh, solves that, it has a concept of that, it's called maybe time, so that, that would be very helpful. And um, Z-Variant already has support for that, for, for G-Variant, so uh, it works nicely. And also I want to enable remote transport. Um, so it, it is not a, just a solution for local IPC because right now Dbus is only like people only and only use it if uh, they are doing local and even then if it's uh, Linux um, usually they try to avoid it on other platforms so uh, I want it to be cross-platform and also for uh, remote so that uh, whenever you need it, RPC or IPC you, you can just choose Dbus and it, it works. Yeah, that's, that's mostly it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any questions? I see a hand. I see two hands. I'll dip back with you. You spread out well. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, I wonder how did you find the Rust development environment, especially when developing for async, uh, debugging support and such? Well, uh, to be honest, I was one of the C programmers who would do print, printf, you know, like for, for debugging. <laughs> I never really used uh, debugger much. I think the only times I would use debugger uh, GDB would be to get a, a stack a backtrace for a crash. And as I said, there's no uh, crashes in, in, in Rust. And even when there are these panics, you get a, back, a bit of backtrace and um, you can define an environment variable where you get a better backtrace. So my needs gets fulfilled by that. And also, it's much, much rarer. If you do it right, it's so rare to have a real crash in, in Rust. You might get these panics, um, but you can avoid those as well if you, if you do it right. Um, and I try, to, I try my best to, to avoid it. Um, in fact, like there's, um, um, like in, in Rust, you have an unsafe uh, uh, keyword where you can do a bit of unsafe programming on your own. And uh, the convention is to have a comment which uh, in capital says safety column and then you justify and prove that why this thing you're doing is actually safe and, and why Rust uh, cannot, you know, why do you need the unsafe keyword. So uh, there is no convention, uh, the same convention for these panics when you say unwrap and if the, your assumption is wrong about uh, error case and it panics. Um, but I follow it myself. I, I try to put a safety comment and say that why this cannot panic. Um, so yeah, it helps me as well to process it, like to prove to myself that yeah, the, in this case it is uh, quite safe. So to to answer your question briefly, um, you don't really need debugging that much. So I I, I don't need it at least. So. Thanks for the talk. It was really good. Thanks. Um, uh, there is some like protocols on top of the bus, like the key ring thing. I think uh, the what sorry? The key ring, the gnome, uh, gnome ah. key ring. Do you implement those traits or or like provide them or something like that? Uh, I think you might be talking about like um, services that are built on top, right? And they provide specific APIs. Um, so yeah, there's, there's, as I said, like there's these system services like system D and stuff. So one of them is like uh, this uh, ring. What do you call it? What did you say? A ring? Uh, key ring. Key ring. Yeah, yeah, the key ring, uh, which recently had some big problem, right? Like a year ago. Or so. <laughs> yeah. 
No, yeah, they're just services yeah, on top of that. Yeah. Another question, maybe? Yes, I saw yeah. that you stuffed a string into the bus and it was not a C string, so it might have a null in the middle of it. Will that make every other service on the bus puke? So the encoding, decoding part, which is the variant, handles that for you. So if there is a null byte needed, it will add it for you, or if it needs to remove it, it will do that for you. So you don't need to worry about that. You just use the usual um, string type in Rust, and that's it. Uh, but we do support, like, if you want to use C-string and stuff, it's, uh, it's also, also supported, all those types. Right, so I realize that you uh, only really reach the MVP stage of uh, Zbus or Dbuzz at the moment, but uh, have you done any preliminary Bing benchmarks on it? Uh, benchmarks of what kind? Of? Uh, benchmarks as to regular uh, bus performance, because one of the uh, um, main things that the Dbuzz broker project uh, worked on was the better performance compared to the uh, reference implementation. Yeah, so uh, for the Zbus itself, somebody once did it, like uh, I think a year ago or so, they, they were doing, I think uh, they were they actually did it directly on Zvariant, and they did a comparison of all the Rust traits at least, um, and we have a benchmark in our repo for, for that, for Zvariant, um, so I check it every now and then if uh, the performance has regressed or something, actually I haven't checked recently, I should do that, you're right. Um, for Dbus itself, it's super new. Um, so I haven't really done that yet. As I said, it's not even an MVP yet. So once it's an MVP, um, I will I will want to do uh, uh, comparison. Uh, I actually have to do comparison with the C uh, because uh, if it's a replacement, it has to perform very similarly. Um, but I have a feeling that it performs better because um, there are some things in C that are uh, hard to get performant because you have to yourself uh, take care of, like for example, mutexes and all that. Um, and in, in Rust you don't have to, um, unless you really have to. So the compiler will tell you that, oh, you can't do this. So then you add the mutex. But in C, since it's all up to you, you sometimes also uh, add uh, locks and stuff where you really don't need it. So uh, yeah, so that, that happens easily in, in C. So we will see. But um, from what I've seen, like with my eyes so far, it's no problem. So. Uh, I was wondering on one of your slides, you said that you learned Rust the hard way by going for this problem. But then what would be the easy way to learn Rust? I thought it was always the best way to solve a problem that you have to learn a new language. Uh, yeah, that's uh, really glad that you asked this question because um, to every uh, person who is new to Rust, I uh, point them to this uh, blog post from uh, this company called Ferris Systems there in Berlin and they are a Rust uh, expertise uh, company basically. Um, and they wrote about mindset and expectations. So if you Google for Rust mindset and expectations, you will find that blog post. And in which they describe that um, a lot of people come with this uh, mentality, especially from JavaScript where uh, the, the main way to learn is just by starting to do it, right? Um, but in Rust it doesn't work that way because it's a bit of a paradigm shift and it works, it has a unique memory management uh, model. Um, you, what, what is recommended way is like you first learn the basic of the language through some book that teaches it to a beginner. Um, and once you have grasped all the essentials of the language, then the advanced stuff you can learn, learn later by doing it and by getting into uh, all the different kinds of crates and trying out different libraries and, and creating a specific solution, uh, actually. So, um, I have seen many people do that, like they, uh, they will say, oh, I'll learn by creating, let's say, a calculator or this or that, and then they end up with a lot of, uh, yeah. You can learn it that way. If you're persistent, um, it's actually a better way to learn, uh, I would say. But, uh, yeah, as long as you're persistent, then you can, you can take the pain. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, go the easy way. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for the sh yeah, sharing this good story. Uh, mm -hmm. Really mm -hmm. impressive and appreciate it again. I, I also, yeah, thinking about to learn uh, the Rust, and whenever I try to run, uh, learn Rust, I yeah, face the, some kind of some war. Um, mm -hmm. For example, yeah, I have the same background with you. I, I'm very familiar with the C, G, lib based uh, some softwares. So, um, 
Yeah, first, uh, the question I had uh, in, in this topic, uh, if I make this kind of the C Rust library uh, replacement for the debus, I, I first think about the, um, what's the, the main event loop integration model. If you look at the debus C library, it is mainly designed for um, some yeah, IO multiplexing uh, the main event loop from the glib mm -hmm. and Qt, something like that, right? Yeah. So maybe I want to hear more about the asynchronous uh, API oh, okay. model from Diva Z, uh, but maybe you have... Uh, yeah, um, so as I was saying, like uh, this was one of the challenges for creating the async API. Um, because there is no standard uh, runtime, right? And it has to work with all of them. Uh, and there are two uh, main ones. There's uh, Tokyo, uh, which most uh, people use, and I'm using myself in my in, in Dbuzz itself. Um, but then, if you uh, there, there's libraries that assume that, but then they are not usable in in uh, with other runtimes, right? Um, and um, uh, so, if you use one of those runtimes, they they provide these macros that you can use on your main function and then you can um, you can just use that macro just like uh, I was using the Zbus macro you can use their provided macros like Tokyo, column column main or uh, uh, there's another uh, uh, oh, uh, async std, async std is called um, uh, column column main they're, they're similarly named actually the APIs um, and then your main function is uh, transformed into an async function, async main and then the runtime is running in the background, and then all your calls can be async, and you can say dot await. Um, and there's also, so this is more about the Rust um, runtime, uh, async support, for example, like not, not Zbus, because Zbus is, is uh, you know, one of the APIs, it's, a, it's a async, but it's using the Rust async. Um, so whatever you can use with uh, async, uh, you know, the Rust async, you can also use with, with Zbus as well. Um, yeah, you, usually people use Tokyo, so you can have a look at look at that. And, you know, you will find very good examples, and there is a lot of nice APIs around uh, these async APIs. So um, you can uh, wait for multiple async calls at the same time. You can uh, join them. You can you know there's you can map them into different things. You can convert them. Like, there is like a lot of uh, combinator APIs available as well. Um, yeah, so you can you can really play with them. It's it's uh, it's actually pretty pretty cool. Um, yeah. Uh, I have one more question. Um, so you you shared us um, you recently um, have MVP uh, broker uh, stuff using this, right? So have you ever tried to replace uh, the system bus session bus in the desktop uh, with your broker? No, as I said, like I haven't. It's not MVP yet. So, but that's my short-term goal to make it MVP by providing all the standard APIs. Once I have done it, then it should be pretty easy to, to, to check that <laughs> with other services, right? And I don't even have to replace the services. I can just run those services on, um, like point them to my service, and yeah, it, it can be tested yeah, that way. But I don't have any tests for for all of them, so I don't know how to. I will just have to manually test uh, a bunch of them <laughs> uh, or write some code for it. Any, around for hands. any suggestion for uh, the names? <laughs> Serious suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> no? Okay. I'll, I'll call it uh, Baskin. No. That's with GNOME. What about Z? I, I said serious suggestion. <laughs> Password. <laughs> That's not bad actually. <laughs> yeah, let's discuss that over coffee, but thank you. Oh yeah, wait, I have a slide for that. You have a slide for coffee? Yes. Awesome. <laughs>